So um, we can go in our Bibles to Genesis chapter number 39, but I want to start here. Listen, I grew up in a church called True Apostolic Assembly, and in this church, thankfully, they did teach us about sex and sexuality. But what is also important to know, here's what they taught us. They taught us sex is nasty, it's gross, it's naughty, save it for your wife. Yeah, that, that was it. And for the ladies, they taught them the same thing. Sex is nasty, it's gross, save it for your husband. And what they were trying to do is they were trying to say that sex outside of God's confines is that way. They weren't talking about all sexuality. They were talking about inside uh, God's expectations of it and outside of it. Because sex is like fire. Sex, um, um, fire provides warmth. If you have a furnace in your home, it provides heat throughout the whole home. If you have a gas oven stove, you need a flame in order to cook your food. And the food you eat provides nourishment. That's what sex in marriage does. It provides warmth and it provides nourishment to the whole household. But sex outside of confines is like sex in a forest. It's unrestrained. It's wild. It will burn up plants and vegetation and trees and animals and that's the same thing that happens when I introduce sex before marriage I start seeing red flags but I identify them as pink because my body is more tied in than my mind is uh huh and I allow my body to make decisions that under norms normal circumstances my mind would never make so God says my uh, a union of sex is supposed to be done between a marriage because then there is a freedom uh huh, that happens in that that's not supposed to happen that isn't supposed to happen in every other way and today I'm going to arm you through the word of God with how to defeat sexual sin not just how to fight it but how to defeat it I know what you're thinking you're thinking Alan Foster I don't struggle with sexual sin okay <laughs> whether you had sex last night with somebody who wasn't your spouse or whether you are celibate. This is true for fighting all sexual sin. You might not need it now, but wait till Tuesday. I mean, Wednesday, wait till Valentine's Day. You may need it by then. And even if you identify, hey, maybe I don't need it then, give it to somebody, not sex. Give these notes, but wisdom and insight to somebody because sexuality is the area that the enemy wants to fight us all, all the time and in every way. And God has given us tools that we can use to defeat him. Amen. Amen. So Genesis chapter number 39, when Joseph had been brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, a captain of the guard, an Egyptian had brought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. And the Lord was with Joseph. Remember, the Lord was with Joseph. He wasn't by himself. And he became a successful man. Why did Joseph become a successful man? Because the Lord was with him. And he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him. And he gave, made him the overseer of his house and put him in charge of everything that he had. Let me skip down here. In verse number six, the second half, when Joseph, now Joseph was handsome and in form and appearance. This is important to know. The Bible only gives this description to three men. It gives it to David. It gives it to Absalom, David's son, and it gives it to Joseph. So in other, when the Bible calls you attractive, you are attractive. When the Bible says you good looking, you are good looking. Okay. You hear me? He was uh, beautiful. The Bible says handsome in form and appearance, body and appearance. And after a time, his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, lie with me. And he refused and said to his master's wife, behold, because of my master has no concern for anything in this house. And he has put everything in my charge. I'm skipping down to verse number nine. It says, I'm not going to do this because he's your wife. And then. I mean, you're his wife. And then he says, how can I do the end of verse number nine? How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And as she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not listen to her to lie with her or to be with her. But one day when he went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house were there in the house, she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and got out of the house. Today, I'm teaching you from the word of God how to defeat sexual sin, how to defeat sexual sin 
Okay, so let me give you some context for the content. So Joseph had a bunch of brothers, and uh, he was favored, but he was a little tour. So God gave him a vision, and he told the vision that God gave him to his brothers and he took that vision and he shared it with his brothers and naturally because of that his brothers hated him and they said we got to get rid of this dude so they were like we're going to kill him then they said no we're not going to kill him we're going to put him in a pit then we put him in the pit and then they said no we're not going to leave him in the pit we're going to sell him for money because we ain't getting no money off of, off of him being in the pit and they sold him into slavery to the ishmaelites and that's where potiphar buys him from so joseph is a slave to potiphar and the Bible says in verse number seven, okay, now we're going to get into how the enemy works here. The Bible says in verse number seven, and after some time, his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. Let's pause there because here's how the enemy tries to get most of us initially. Here's our key. He starts with attention. He knows that you love God. So he's not going to be overt, in other words, over the top to try to get you. He's going to be covert. In other words, he's going to try to slide in through the DMs. To get you the enemy's gonna try to come in uh, uh, appears as a, a lion excuse me a sheep in wolves clothing that's how he's gonna try to get you but your connection with God is so important that when you stay connected with God even when he tries to come in in a smooth way you'll be able to see him because you're connected with God and God shows you through what he sees the enemy when he really comes so the enemy comes to Joseph through sexual temptation and he said she says uh, the Bible says she cast her eyes on him or she notices him gets his attention in other words another way it says in the hebrew is his her visibility of him was raised okay write this down because this is important what you look at leads to what you long for Ooh, glory to god what you look at leads to what you long for you can't look at any and everything and not say it's affecting you what you look at affects you what you watch on instagram affects you what you watch on facebook affects you what you watch when your spouse goes to bed affects you what you watch on that website affects you what you pour your time and attention into is what leads you if you're watching lustful things lust will lead your life but if you're watching things that glorify God and magnify God and lift up God, God will lead your life. What you look at ends up to be what you long for. So she wants him after she looks at him. Then she opens up her mouth and say, lie with me. She's aggressive, too. OK, but Je uh, the Bible says Joseph doesn't. He knows how to respond to this. And here's our first note here. The first thing to do when the enemy tries to attack you and get your attention is to refuse immediately. Write that down. Refuse immediately. Don't wait. Don't say I can handle it. Refuse immediately. I got a definition for you here. Refuse means to show or express unwillingness to do or comply with. Refuse means to show or express an unwillingness to do or comply with. Watch me. Joseph says in verse number seven, let me make sure I'm right here. In verse number nine, he says why he's not going to do it. He can't do this great wickedness and sin against God. Wait a second. Joseph had no Bible, no Old Testament, no New Testament, no Ten Commandments. None of that. But Joseph knew that this dishonored God because he was close to God. You want to know what God values? Get close to him. And you, my brother, you You can know God. You can know God's will. You can know God's way. Uh-huh. See how I dropped that mic? That's how some of y'all want to drop it like it's hot. Don't you fall for the trick. Okay? Let me help you. He didn't have any Bible, any Ten Commandments, anything, but he had a closeness to God. James chapter 4, verse number 8 says, come close to God and he will come close to you. Draw close to God and God will draw close to you. Come nigh to God and God will show you what pleases him. God wants you to know what pleases him. All right? I, I know what you're thinking. Well, what, what, what difference does it make? I don't have time to go through all the whole thing. But in 2 Samuel uh, chapter number uh, 12, David 
is supposed to be off at war and he sees this beautiful woman, her name Bathsheba, and he decides to lie with her. And then he decides to kill her husband so he can lie with her with no problems, okay? He says, I want her and I'm going to get her. He kills the husband and then he's just, you know, they just getting down with the get down. And a friend of his whose name is Nathan comes to him and he says, because your friends know how to get you. Your friends know how to correct you. Your friends know how to speak to you. Your friends know how to get you in check in a smooth way and you don't even know what happened. That's why you need godly friends. Say, I need godly friends. He says, hey, man, let's say there was a man who had thousands of sheep, David, and he saw a man, an old man who only had one poor sheep, a baby sheep. And he took that man's lamb and killed the man and took that lamb and added it to his thousands. What would you do? David said, I'm mad right now. Just listening to this. Show me where this man is and I'll kill him. David, Nathan said, oh, that's interesting. You are the man. And David was struck in his heart. And David said, similar to what Joseph said, he says, I have sinned against God because Joseph and David understood this. All sin is sin. All sin is against God first. Let me say it again. All sin that we commit is sin against God first. Yes, it was sin against Bathsheba. Yes, it was sin against uh, the husband Uriah. But all of our sin affects God first and foremost. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, this is my body. I can do what I want with my body. Y'all remember in 1991, Kid and Play had a song called Ain't Gonna Hurt Nobody. And it was on House Party 2. Y'all remember that? Yes. Bad theology. It will. What you say and what you do does hurt somebody. How you move in the world does hurt people. What you say does hurt people. It can hurt people emotionally and physically and relationally. There are prices to be paid. That's a lie. You, you, you need to understand that 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 verse number 19 says you don't even know that your body is the temple of the almighty God. What does that mean? That means when you lie down in the bed with somebody to have sex with him, you're having church. Woo! I know I just messed it up for you. What am I trying to? He, he's saying your body is God's temple. In other words, it's a place of worship. So why? It's not a one night stand. It's an act of worship. And you trying to worship with somebody that is not your husband and not your wife. And God says that's not acceptable to me. He's saying your body is sacred. Sex is sacred. It's important. It's of high value. So be careful what you do with it. He goes on to say that your body is the temple of the almighty God and you've received it from God. It's not your body. It's God's body that you're living in. Don't you know you've been bought with the price, he says. Now glorify God in your bodies. Somebody say my body belongs to God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Listen. I'm going to give you a couple more here. Then we're going to move Romans chapter 12, verse number one. It says, I'm urging you. I'm begging you by the mercies of God. Now, we know that mercy means getting something that you did not earn, something you didn't deserve. He's saying, be aware of how merciful God has been to you, that you were sleeping around. We were sleeping around and God did not give us all the byproducts of sleeping around that other people got. Come on. Even when you were being reckless, God was still being merciful. Even when you were being ruthless, God was still being merciful to you and I. He says, in view of that, in view of that mercy, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Give your bodies to God. He's saying it has a present, a gift is something that has value. He's saying, give me that. Give me your body as a living sacrifice, but I don't want it any kind of way. I want it holy and acceptable unto God or pleasing unto God, which is your spiritual act of worship. And here we go. Don't be conformed to the patterns of this world. I know the world says sleep around. Don't believe the hype. I know the world says, man, you can sleep with as many people as you want. We can be friends with benefits. That's the pattern of this world. It doesn't work. I know this world says we can sleep together and not have feelings. Somebody going to get feelings real quick. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You've got to be transformed. How are you transformed? By the renewing of your mind. God's word in your mind. God's uh, pr pr 
praying, praying to God in your mind, connecting with other believers and letting the mind of Christ being formed in you. Watch me. This brother says, I'm not going to do this because I have a relationship with God. He said, I can't do this wickedness to Potiphar because Potiphar has given me something that's been a blessing to me. So he's concerned about his reputation in the community. So it's not only my relationship with God, it's my reputation. But David says, I cannot do this great sin against God. And he calls God with the name Elohim, which means creator. He says, I cannot disrespect my creator. He's been too good to me for me to do him like this. Come on, somebody. Let's go next. So first we've got for an attack, not for an attack, for the attention. When he tries to pull you away with attention, you refuse immediately. Here's the next R. We got resist repeatedly. What am I talking about? Resist repeatedly. Where we at? Verse number 10. Here's what it says. And as she spoke to David, not David. Joseph, day after day, day after day, day after day. Let me tell you something. Here's where the enemy gets most of us. It's the day after day. So first he starts with the attention. Next he goes with a persistent attack. But in order to beat his persistent attack, we resist repeatedly. We reject repeatedly. We say no repeatedly. When you say no, you've said a whole sentence. You don't have to say why you're saying no. You can just say no and believe that this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. He said no. Let me tell you something I learned this week that was interesting. It's possible that Potiphar was a eunuch, which means he couldn't sexually satisfy his wife. So it could have been that she thought she was due for some because it had been a while. She had waited. But Joseph said, I'm still not going to do this wicked thing and dishonor God. Whether you earned it or you deserved it or not, because I would rather have you mad at me than God mad at me. And he said, I'm not going to do this thing and dishonor God. I wrote this down because I want you to say it. This is the common attitude we have today. And our modern culture tells us that we are deprived unless we pursue every sexual desire we feel. This is a lie. And this concept makes our sexual desires an idol that rules our life instead of God. God says, I want to rule your life, not your flesh. I want to rule your life, not your sex drive. I want to rule your life not your libido i want to rule your life not your organs come on somebody you have to be willing to resist repeatedly okay the bible says he would not listen to her he wouldn't lie beside her and he wouldn't even be in the same room with her write this down illegitimate relationships contaminate legitimate in intimacy illegitimate relationships contaminate legitimate intimacy in other words when I step out into a place I have no business being it can negatively impact my relationship with God and others because now I think that I can only be loved if physicalness is connected I think if you don't sleep with me you don't love me sometimes people love you so much that they will not sleep with you because they love you but they love God more glory to God and they say I cannot dishonor God this way it is the day after day that gets most of us in trouble you said you wanted to be married but now this waiting on marriage I, i'll wait on him i'll wait on her i'll wait on my spouse and then the days turn into weeks and the weeks turns into months and the months turns into years and then you say well i can at least look at pornography because i'm not hurting anybody if i can't uh, please them i can at least please myself because he's attacking you day after day you say, oh, man, I'm, I'm in a marriage, but my wife don't want to give me none so I can step out. Now that coworker begins to look more attractive. Now I go to lunch with somebody I have no business going to lunch with. I'm just trying to help you. Now I'm reading messages that under regular circumstances I would never read the message. I would never open up that DM. But because the attack is persistent, now I'm going to open it up. I would never respond to a message that late. But this time I do. You have to be willing to resist immediately. Galatians chapter 5 verse number 16 says walk in the spirit so you don't gratify the works of the flesh. I have to be walking in relationship to God. My mind has to be on him. My heart has to be on him. I have to submit my sexuality before him and say Lord this is a struggle for me. I need you to help me to walk in, my, in the spirit so I don't end up in sexual traps that I got myself into. Somebody say amen. 
Verse number 19 of 1 Corinthians 15, it says, Now the works of the flesh are sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, uh, rivalries, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, and orgies. All of these things. This is the Bible, y'all. All of these things do not please God. And the people that do them will not inherit this, uh, the kingdom of God. But he goes on to say, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions. Verse number 25. If you live by the spirit, you will also be in step with the spirit. He's saying you resist through God's spirit, through communing with God, through allowing God's spirit to saturate your mind and your heart and your spirit and your goal and your intention. How do I resist consistently? Pastor Al, I'm glad you asked. First Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 58. Be ye steadfast. Dig your feet down into God's word and be steadfast. Dig your feet into your spiritual prayer time with God and be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding or 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 being in or or, or, or re relaxing in or being overwhelmed by the work of the Lord. Focusing on the things of God helps you to resist. But if you focus on the things of the flesh, you do the things of the flesh. You focus in on being single, but you watching every episode of The Bachelor because you're focused on the flesh. <laughs> And he says, I'm not saying anything's wrong with The Bachelor. I'm saying don't allow what you're seeing on TV or seeing on your social media feed to make you think that you need to act because God is not acting for you. Resist repeatedly. Repeatedly. Amen? <laughs> Listen. Let me tell you why this is so bogus. Judges. She was coming after him day after day. Judges talks to us in chapter number 16 about a man named Samson. Samson was the strongest man in the history of the world. The Bible says the Philistines wanted to defeat him, so they sent a woman mm, to get him. And the Bible says that she asked multiple times where his weakness was, and he would play around with her and not tell her. But the issue was he kept on playing with her. You can't play with poison. Glory to God. You can't play with poison. You have to be intentional and deliberate about it. Let me read what the Bible says to you in Judges chapter number 16. It said that he told her that all he, she had to do was weave him up with seven locks around his head and she did it and it didn't work. And then because that didn't work, she went to manipulation. Judges chapter 16, verse number 15 says, and she said to him, how can you say that I love you? How you that you love me when my heart is not with you? She began to manipulate him. Be careful when people start saying, if you love me, you would do. If you love me, we would be having sex now. If you love me, you would do what I say. My love isn't confined by one act or one choice. My love is a track record. Sometimes people try to manipulate you when you say you're going to wait on God or you're going to wait till you put a ring on it to do it God's way. And they try to manipulate you another way. You have to say, you know what? I would rather God be mad at me than you be mad at me. I mean, I would rather you be mad at me than God be mad at me. So I'm going to resist. The Bible says in verse number 15, she said, how can you do this? When you keep your heart from me, you have mocked me these three times. And you haven't told me where your strength lies. And when she pressed him hard with her words, hard with her proposals, hard with asking to go out to eat, hard with asking to let me take you out on today, hard with, listen, let me take you out for your birthday. You wouldn't say no. You would have said no every other time. But because it's your birthday, you said yes. Because it's Valentine's Day Wednesday, you said yes. Come on. They're pressing you hard with their words, pressing you hard with the with the with the pictures or the videos or the comments or the flirtatious text messages. And you can't be playing with this. Here's what happened. And she urged him. He did this. The Bible says his soul was vexed to death. So he finally told her because he was vexed to death. And he told her her heart and said to her what the secret was. And as soon as he told her what the secret was, he was overwhelmed. What am I saying? You have to resist repeatedly because you can't stay in proximity to something that's trying to kill you. And the enemy, even when he uses people to pull you out and uh, uh, do things sexually that you know dishonor God or do any kind of sin, he's trying to kill you. He'll show you the value. He'll show you the product, but he'll hide the price tag. 
He'll show you the relationship, but he won't show you what happens when you stop giving them what they want. They'll throw you to the side like you're a dirty rag. But God says, I've got something better for you than that. Let me keep moving. And I've got one more point here. Sometimes. Because we're in this world and not in heavenly places yet. Right feels wrong and wrong feels right. Sometimes doing the right thing feels like doing the wrong thing. And sometimes doing the wrong thing feels like you're doing the right thing. Did I say that right? Yes. All right. And you're not alone if you've ever felt that way. In uh, Romans chapter number seven, Paul says around four, verse number 14, he said, when I would do good, evil is always present. He says, what I hate to do is what I do. And what I don't want to do. Or what I want to do is what I don't do. He's saying there is a battle in me. Sin. Stop saying because you desire these things. That's just the way I am. I just got to have sex every night. That's just the way it is. I just can't be a. I just can't not have sex. I just can't not be sexual. I just can't not flirt. I just can't. That's who I am. No, that's sin. That's in you. And it's it, the desire is right. But in the wrong confines outside of marriage, it will dishonor God and you'll have a slew of consequences. He said, when I want to do good, I do the evil that I don't want to do because sin is in me. So you and I have to allow ourselves to be relinquished from God's power or to tap into God's power. And in verse number 25 of Romans chapter seven, he says this. But thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our savior. Mm hmm. My Lord, who helps us not to serve sin. It is God in me that helps me to not serve sin. It is God. She is tempting. To, they, uh, she is tempting uh, Joseph. And he did not give in to the temptation. Pray that God would help you not to give in to the temptation. You can't control whether they tempt you, but you can control how you respond. He did not flirt or speak with her, nor did he go with her sexually. He was being tempted all the time. And let me tell you, Hebrew says that Jesus was tempted in every manner like you and I, but he withstood the temptation. That's why we have to give our lives to Jesus, because without him, we can't withstand the temptation. Sexual, emotional, relational, whatever sin, sexual or non-sexual, we cannot defeat sexual sin without Jesus because he's already defeated it. We can't say no without him because he gives us the self-control, which is one of the fruits of the spirit. Jesus was tempted in every way, in every point that we were tempted and he withstood the temptation. So I stand the temptation by standing in him. I can say no by communing with him. I can res uh, res refuse immediately because he refused immediately through his power and through his Holy Spirit. I can resist repeatedly because he resisted repeatedly. He said, depart from me. Uh, he, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He resisted so I can resist. That's why I need Jesus to withstand the woes of this life. Amen. God, it may be testing you in this moment. God, the enemy may be tempting you in this moment, but God says, I'll use the test for your good and for my glory. God might be trying to get something out of you and you don't even know what it is. Job chapter 23, verse number 10 says, when he has tried me, after he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. After the test is coming, God saying, I'm going to show you that my spirit is still working, that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is strengthening you and empowering empowering you and shaping you more like me. That's why your desires are changing. Some of us have been, some of y'all have been celibate for a week, for a month, for months. Some of it has been years. That's God's spirit strengthening you. And let me tell you something. You're not going to sacrifice sexually and God not make a way for you in another way. God not provide for you. God not strengthen you. God's going to pour into you. God says, I, if you could, would, could be sexually celibate, I'll uh, allow your mind and judgment to be clear so you can know which one is your spouse and which one is not. Which one uh, uh, is a good time and which one is the one for a lifetime. I got to move. I got to move. So for the attention when the enemy comes, We've got resist immediately for the uh, attack persistently when the enemy comes. We've got resist. Uh oh, I messed it up. Refuse immediately. And for the attack that comes persistent, we've got resist, 
repeatedly. And then this last one here, the Bible says that Joseph, in verse number 10, 11, and one day when he, nope, let's start with verse number 10. And she spoke to him day after day and would not listen. Verse number 11, he says, and one day he went into the house to do his work and none of the men were in the house there that day. Well, you know what that's called? Ambush city limit. Oh, ambush. She ambushed him. Okay. Cleared out all the house. Uh -huh, and she caught him by the garment. Some of y'all, okay, she grabbed him, choked him up and said, lie with me. And the Bible says he left his garment in her hand and got out of there. She got aggressive. Okay. Some of y'all like whips and chains and all that. I'm not here to condemn that. Okay. If you marry, do your thing. God bless you. All right. But she, she got aggressive and a certain dominatrix on him. Okay. And you know what? He said, I'm out of here. She ambushed him. That's okay. So we've got the enemy first starts to try to get your attention. Then he'll attack you persistently. Then he'll ambush you out of nowhere. And what's his response? To run immediately. Stop when the enemy tempts you in any way with your money, with your time, with your talent, with your treasure, with your sexuality. Stop saying, Lord, please show me how to get out of this situation. How do I leave? How do I leave? They're putting pressure on me. How do I leave? It's called a door. Walk out the door. Uh-uh, I got to go. Uh-uh, I got to leave. You have to say, you know what, Lord? You don't have to open up a way of escape. I'll open it. There's a door right there. I'm going to leave. Joseph said, I have to get out of here. Maybe he left because he couldn't take it anymore. Maybe he left because he was getting ready to give in. But he left because he said, I have other things to do. Second Timothy chapter number two, verse number 22 says, flee youthful lust. Flee. Some situations are so heated, you have to leave. No, we can't be friends. You've got to leave. No, you can't call me anymore. You've got to leave. No, I'm not coming over to your house to do Bible study at 1 a.m. You got to leave. No, we're not going to Netflix and chill. You got to leave. And if you won't leave, I will. Because my intimacy with God means more than this momentarily thing with you. And let me tell you. The Bible says that sex is pleasurable, but here's what it says, that these things, that sex, that pleasure is going to last for a moment. Uh huh. But God says when you do it in my relationship, let me tell you why sex outside of marriage, God says is wrong. I'm right. Because sex is supposed to be a giving of the whole body. And when you lie with somebody and you give them your whole body. And you don't give them anything else. You're lying because sex is supposed to be a giving of the body. I'm doing with my body what I've done with my heart, with my emotions, with my insecurities, with my vulnerabilities. So I'm giving you my body. I'm being vulnerable with my body, but not vulnerable with you emotionally. I'm becoming one with you sexually, but not one with you relationally. Or in a covenant marriage. Uh huh. I'm giving you uh, something that's sacred to me in my body, but I'm not, I can't trust you. Uh huh. That's why one night stands don't work. That's why friends with benefits don't work. That's why hooking up, homie lover, friend, that kind of stuff doesn't work because I'm lying. I'm being inconsistent. I'm giving you something with my body that I'm not prepared to give in any other way. And God says, when you do it in marriage, you're prepared. You're protecting yourself and that uh, giving of your body deepens the relationship. It strengthens the relationship. It, it, it reaffirms what's happening on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all day long. You give them your body and it's a beautiful thing because you're saying you're a safe space. I can love you. I can trust you and you're not going to hurt me. The enemy wants you and I to lose our minds and our willingness sexually because when we do that, it's all down here from there. Let me tell you something. This brother ran quickly and she still lied on him. And he, had, excuse me, he ended up in prison. But the last chapter of verse, the last verse of chapter number 39 says this. Joseph was in prison. I'm paraphrasing. But the Lord was with him. Can I tell you? Sometimes you'll be punished for doing the right thing. But even when you're punished, you'll still prosper. Hallelujah. Even when you are being punished from the world, God will still prosper you. If you're staying celibate, I know there's a lot of pressure, but God will prosper you in your celibacy. If you're waiting on your wife, wait on your wife 
and God will send you a woman that will blow your mind. If you're waiting on a husband, wait, because God will send you a, a man that will be what he wants you to have, that will love you and honor you, that will not disrespect you, that will give you what you need. But Joseph said, I'm going to resist, refuse immediately. I'm going to resist repeatedly, and I'm going to run away. And let me help you. It's not what you run from that matters the most. It's what you run to. I believe Joseph ran into a time with God and he was praying and he was seeking God because he needed God in that moment because he knew that things were not looking good. But God found a wonderful way to take a terrible situation and work it out for his good and for your glory. You can defeat sexual sin. You can defeat it. Whether you're doing it with somebody else, whether you're doing it with yourself, whether you're looking at it, lust, pornography, magazines, videos, Instagram, books, whatever it is, you can defeat it through God's power and through his spirit. You have to resist, refuse immediately because you know God has better for you. You have to resist repeatedly because you know that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And you have to run away quickly. Because you know that it's not what you run from that matters. It's who you run to. And I want to invite you today to run into the arms of Jesus. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, today's a great day to do it. If you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, put I want to be saved in the chat and we'll reach out to you. But I want to be saved. You can defeat this thing, but you cannot defeat it by yourself. God will be your strength and he will help you. Lord, I pray for everybody who's watching today, everybody who's listening, everybody who's in this room. Minister to your people. Help them to know that they can defeat sexual trauma sexual sin sexual abuse uh sexual temptation not through our own ability but through your ability you overcame the temptation and because you overcame we can overcome too I give you great praise and honor it's in jesus name i pray amen god bless you love you to life